Hi all, Ali here. In this video, we'll introduce you to the concept of HTML tables, followed by a live coding session. We would apply all of the learned concepts in Visual Studio Code to see the results taking shape and practice different styling options on the table as well. Before diving into HTML tables, let's first quickly explore what a table is. A table is an arrangement of information or data in rows and columns. This arrangement is not new to humanity and is in use since ancient times to keep ledgers and organize information. If you are familiar with relational databases, they allow you to store almost any kind of data using tables. In everyday use, we use tables all the time, for example, organizing student, faculty or class information in a school, financial information over time, ledgers and accounting data, bus and train schedules, broader data sheets, and so, so many other possible examples. If you are about to buy a new phone or laptop and want to compare specs of various options, you usually get the comparisons in form of tables where specs are provided in rows and products being compared as columns. Tables are used wherever any information can be presented as rows and columns. And this presentation format is so invasive, HTML created a dedicated element for the sole purpose of showing a table. And that element would be the HTML table element, which is a flexible element letting you show any kind of data or information as a grid of rows and columns on the screen. The interesting part is that though we generally visualize a table to be presenting text, the HTML element is very flexible and you can show any other type of element as cell content, which can be another table, divs, lists, buttons, forms, pretty much all HTML elements. Sometimes people try to use tables to organize the layout of an entire web page with banner on top, site navigation content, and advertising panels as three columns, and then footer containing contact us, home, privacy policy, and other links as a footer row. Pretty logical technique, and at one time pretty popular as well, if your web page layout is rectangular, but a practice strongly discouraged today due to a variety of factors, which we won't be bothered to discuss today, except it generally stems from hesitation to learn and apply CSS, but results in additional markup associated with tables and with requirement creep quickly becoming overcomplicated and hard to maintain. It is also very disruptive to the web ecosystem, like some accessibility apps for visually impaired people can be thrown off balance, with tables being used for web page design, which is not the purpose as such. Well, Trying to regain focus again, I would shush myself on this topic by just letting you to be brave and use CSS and not tables to design your web page layout. So let's get familiarized with some basic terminology of HTML tables before we move to Visual Studio Code as a big picture is always helpful before starting to code. So the table element represents the top level element that represents the entire final table presented on the screen. It is, however, made up of multiple constituent or child elements and attributes, some of which are listed here. The basic ones are TR, which represents a row of the table, and hence a table can be considered to be a stack of multiple TR elements, which are rendered as per the order you add them in the HTML inside the table element. Each row is then made up of multiple cells that exist side by side next to each other, and each cell is represented by TD elements. I have used TD elements like an ignorant person for so many years, but today I finally looked up why it is called TD and not TC, since it's a table cell, and found that it means table data, since the cell is supposed to present data. So it's not just you learning today, and it serves as a perfect example of knowing little and running with it without any harm done, but is usually a bad practice, so avoid that. Anyway, the sequential order of TD elements in their respective TR parents make up a column of the table. You get it? Like first TD in first TR element of table would mean data in first column of first row. Then first TD in second TR element would mean data in first column of second row, and so on ultimately making up the entire first column of the table. This is important to understand as the markup in HTML is not organized as a table. So without realizing how we are using markup to organize rows and columns, it gets confusing. If you didn't understand, 
Please rewind 10, 20 seconds and listen again. All right, next up is TH, which stands for table header cells. Unless you are creating a table without a header row and column, the first entry in each TR or table row would not be for a TD element, but for a TH element. In fact, if you have a header row on top of your table, the first TR element would only have TH children equal to number of columns in your table. While most tables get away with just the header row, some tables usually have a header column as well. For example, if your table is scores of students in your class per subject, the header row would be name of subjects, and you would need a column header containing names of each student for which scores are given in the row. In that case, the first TR would contain TH elements for the subjects, but from second TR all the way to the last, the first entry in each TR would be a TH element containing name of the student. And yes, TH is used for both columns and row headers. If any of these concepts are confusing, don't worry. Any gaps in understanding would be bridged when we reach the coding part. TR, TD, and TH can pretty much make up the HTML table, but there exist a few other elements that make the table element much better organized. In a way, you can consider them optional, but effective in organizing. It's the same effect as dumping all your files in a single folder or desktop versus organizing them in a neat folder hierarchy. So T-head is the first of that class and acts as a logical container for the top row or rows that contain information about table columns. Just like we saw earlier with TH, where we said first row would only have TH elements, using T-head, you would move that row over to content section of a T-head element. Why did I say rows with header information instead of row? Mistakenly? Well, no. The header can comprise of multiple header rows. Using our earlier student results example, the header can have two rows with the top one indicating core versus elective classification for courses with second header row containing individual course name. T body is the element that follows T head in the structured table scenario. It contains all the table rows that make up the data portion of the table. Do note that this does include TH elements for the column headers, which don't fall under T head and there is no specific element for column header. The final optional element is the foot, which contains rows that make up footer for the table, and intended purpose being that those rows should have information about table's columns. The data in those rows usually contains summary of the columns, like sum of all values in a column, etc. A little more information about tables. A table cell can span multiple columns or multiple rows, and is done using call span or row span attributes. So like we discussed having an additional header row for elective versus core subjects, this would be possible by spanning the cell containing the word core across multiple columns. Similarly, a cell spanning multiple rows is also possible. A table cell can be any HTML element, including another table, but that would be horribly complicated markup and there should be a very convincing use case if you ever choose to do so. The size of the table is a function of its contents. Width of a column is calculated based on contents of cells making up the column, as well as with attributes or CSS rules. If no contents or rules are present, columns are evenly spaced. Table cells have no padding or margins. You can add border to table cells, but that sometimes results in thicker border effect due to border overlap, which can be controlled via border collapse property. We shall see that in action during the coding session. Tables are highly customizable via styles, though they would remain table-ish, you can say. You can style all the way from table to table rows, the head, even or odd rows, contents within table cells, etc. Note that just like CSS has overriding from CSS to inline styles, table also has style overrides and precedences, where styles on table element can be overridden by styles applied on column groups and columns, then row groups and rows, and then finally styles applied on table cells, which have highest precedence. Just like images, it takes some effort for table to look good on big as well as small side screen, but it is doable with a variety of available styling options. All right, that concludes our coverage of conceptual knowledge about HTML tables. 
Next up, we shall practice all this knowledge in Visual Studio Code. That would be done in the second part of this video though. So thank you so much for watching this one and see you in the next one.